What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today I am going to show you a scale pattern that will help build your chops and improve your improvisation. The scale pattern that I'm going to show you today is from my Chop Shop series that I use with all of my students. Uh, obviously the idea behind the Chop Shop is to get your fingers moving faster and cleaner. Uh, and this one is really going to help do that. And it's also going to make you think of your scales in a different way, which is really going to help when it comes to improvisation. So the pattern itself is based off of the diatonic major scale. Diatonic just means that all the notes are the notes that are in the major scale. So we're not adding anything. There's no flat nines or sharp 11s or anything. It's just all your major note scales, all your major notes in your scale. So this pattern is based off of a four note sequence. So that technical term for it is called a tetra scale. Tetra meaning four and scale meaning scale. So you're basically playing your scale four notes at a time. So we're going to do it in the key of C to start off. So what we do is play one, two, three, four of your C scale. So you just play the first four notes of your C scale. Really easy, right? Now the second part of it is starting on the C scale from the top note, so the C, and coming down four notes. So that'd be C, B, A, G. So you're playing your scale in reverse. So we play the first four notes ascending. And then the second four notes starting on the root at the top descending. Listen to it together. So all you're doing is playing your uh, major scale and attacking it from both sides. And that gives you two tetra scales. Again, a tetra scale is just a four note scale. So if you look at this tetra scale, the first one is C, D, E, F, right? So those are your first four notes and your C scale. The second four notes we're playing are C, B, A, G, which are the last four notes descending in your C major scale. But if you start those four notes from the bottom, G, A, B, C, those are your first four notes in your G scale. So your major scale, uh, if you cut it in half, you play four notes and four notes, you actually have the beginning of two different major scales, just because of the way the order of whole steps and half steps uh, relate to your major scale. That's just a little side info that you might find useful. But for this exercise, I definitely want you to think of it as just one scale and you're starting it from the bottom and the top. So we are going to do this pattern throughout the entire scale. So we do it on the one. And then we go to the one up at the top. Then we go to the two at the bottom. And the two at the top. Three at the bottom. Three at the top. Four at the bottom. Five at the top. So on and so forth until you play the whole scale. So what this does is it makes you think of your scales in two different directions. Uh, especially when it comes to improv with my intermediate students, when they get into improvisation, a lot of times when they think of their scales, they only think of it as ascending. So it takes them a while to think of it as, as descending. Uh, in other words, starting on the top and going down. So by doing this pattern, it really makes your brain think in a different way of how these scales are arranged. So th that's how it's going to really help you with improv. And it's going to make your lines sound better because you're not just playing straight up the scale. Okay, because we are doing uh, this diatonic scale pattern on all the modes of this scale, in other words, we're going to do it on the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and the seven, it covers a ton of range on your saxophone. So it is not going to fit uh, doing the pattern just like I showed you in every key because you're going to run out of notes. So I'm going to show you an example of doing it in G so that you can see how to deal with this thing. Basically, whenever you need to drop, whenever you run out of notes, you get high into your palm keys. If you get up to a D or an E, you can drop something down an octave and then the whole thing starts over. So this is what it will sound like in G and I will show you exactly how and when to drop. So we'll go up the G for, for the four, first four notes, the ascending, then down, then up A, which is the two, and then down the two. So that note, top note, of course, is an A. So then we go up the three, which is B, and then down the B, then up the C, then down the C, then up D, down D, then up to E. This is going to be the last one we're going to do. Down E. Now we go to F sharp. 
Uh, we could go up F sharp and then down high F sharp, but if you don't have a high F sharp on your saxophone or you're not comfortable playing that note, you can drop. So I'm gonna show you how to drop. So we're gonna go up F sharp. Then we're gonna play the exact same F sharp, but go down. So I'll put those two together so you can hear it again. I'm playing the F sharp going up and then the F sharp going down, but I'm playing the same F sharp, so we're changing the direction. Then I go back to my G, down. So when you get out of range, you just play that note in both octaves and then you drop the next note down so that you can stay in the middle range of your saxophone. Now at the end, I want it to sound more finished. When I do this, it kind of sounds finished, but it would sound way better if we skipped the root, went to the seven, and then went to the root. So we're enclosing the root. So it would sound like this. Again. Just to clarify a little bit more, on the last tetra scale, the root, when you get back to the root up at the top, we are gonna go up one, two, three, four, just like we were before. We're gonna ascend one, two, three, four. But when we descend, we're gonna play the whole scale so that it sounds finished. So we're gonna play all the way down, we're gonna skip the root, go to the seven, and land on the one. So we're enclosing the one. So it'll sound like this. So again, the whole last scale pattern put together, starting on the G. And that is the Tetra scale pattern from my Chop Shop series. And if you work on this, I can promise you your scales will get better and cleaner and you'll get way better at being able to jump around in your scales, which will really help your improvisation. Now with a lot of my Chop Shop series, I give you a PDF to play along with and to learn them. But with this one, I don't want you to do it like that. I want you to go one, two, three, four, and then in your mind, figure out what the root is and go down eight, seven, six, five. I want you to, instead of like reading it and uh, just memorizing it that way, I want you to really think about what you're playing. It's a fairly easy pattern because both parts of the pattern start on the same note. So uh, when we're in the key of G, the one ascending starts on a G and the one descending starts on a G and then you go up to A and the ascending starts on an A and the descending starts on an A. So it's a fairly easy pattern to figure out. And once you get used to it in the key of C and G and maybe D, uh, your fingers will get really used to jumping around in that pattern. So the way you want to sound when you are practicing it is really clean. You do not want to play it like this. That is not gonna help you at all. That is not gonna build your chops. It's just gonna sound sloppy and teach you really bad habits. So take it as slow as you need to take it to play it really clean and really even. That is a really good tempo to start at uh, until you're really comfortable with the pattern. And again, this is not one that you wanna do in all the scales all at once. Figure it out in C, get it down really good in C, then move on to G, then move on to D, move on to A. Do one uh, scale at a time, one key signature at a time. That's gonna make life way easier for you. And as you get it down, you'll be able to play it faster and be able to do more key signatures at a time. But in the beginning, just focus on one and get it really clean and try and get your tempo clean and even around here. As far as the articulations go, I would just tongue the root in both directions, so ascending and descending and slur everything else. That's gonna give you more than enough separation and adding in any more stuff to that is gonna make it more difficult than it needs to be. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. I hope this new scale pattern will help you build your chops and get your improv sounding even better. And if it does, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh.